I'm Jay. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you have a great day. God bless you. Today we're going to talk about the Trinity of God. Let's get started. <laughs> The first question is, what is the Trinity of God? The Trinity of God means that there is one God who eternally exists as three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is three in person and one in essence. I'd like to start an explanation with some Hebrew words in Genesis 1.1. Bereshit banga Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz. Hebrew is different from English. Hebrew language is written from right to left, and Hebrew language have totally different grammar. In the ancient Hebrew, it follows verb, subjective, objective order in the sentences. In Genesis one one, the Hebrew word used for God is Elohim. Elohim is a plural now. It's not only a plural; it's a collective plural, means three. It has the threefold meaning. The singular form for Elohim is Eloa. Since the word for God is a plural, it's supposed to be followed by a plural verb, but instead. It followed by a singular verb, banga. So this had indicated that God is three in one. And you can also find the Trinity of God in the Matthew twenty eight nineteen twenty. It says. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. So here, the name of, the name, is a singular now. There is no s after it. But the name is actually referring to three persons: the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it has the threefold meaning in it. And here also indicates that God is three in one. Second, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are God. The three persons in the Trinity are equal God. Let's explain it one by one. First, the Father is God. In Isaiah sixty-four eight, it says, "But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our Potter, and all we are the work of your hand." Here in the English translation. We use the word Lord for God, but in the Hebrew verse, it's actually the name of God, and people who speak Hebrew language will not pronounce this word, because they want to show their respect to God, and they will replace the name of God with a different word, which is Adonai. I can pronounce the name of God once, just for the purpose of a study. Okay. So the name of God is Yahweh. And later, I will always use Adonai to replace the name of God. Next, the Son is God. In Philippians two ten to eleven, it says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So the Son is God. Next, the Holy Spirit is God. In the Second Corinthians three seventeen, 
it says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So the Holy Spirit is God. Number three, there is one true God. God is three in one. In Deuteronomy 6 4 7, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commitments that I gave you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. So God is one being. He is three in person and one in essence. Number four, how to understand the Trinity. A lot of the time, we intended to use water analogy for the Trinity of God because it could give you the very basic idea of one thing with three forms. The molecular symbol of water is H2O. That means one water molecule consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So that's why it's H2O. Water at a room temperature is liquid. And the molecular symbol for liquid water is H2O. And when water is heated, it turns into steam. And the symbol for steam is still H2O. And when water is frozen, it turns into ice. And the symbol for ice is still H2O. So the water analogy could give you the very basic idea of one thing with three forms. There are also some disadvantages of a water analogy. First of all, water, steam, and ice cannot exist at the same temperature. For example, ice will melt at a hot temperature. But a Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit can present at the same time regardless of the restrictions in the temperature. Besides, there is a love relationship among the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is missed in the water analogy. And in addition, the water analogy also missed the relationship that Jesus is the Son of God. So there is no equal to the Trinity of God. The Trinity of God is very unique. Number five. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit loves every one of us. First of all, the Father loves us. In 1 John 3, 1, it says, Say what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. So the Father loves us. And next, the Son loves us. In John 15, 9, it says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. So the Son loves us. Next, the Holy Spirit loves us. In Romans 5, 5, it says, And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And remember, Holy Spirit is God, and God is love. And also, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. And God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So everything about Holy Spirit is love. Number six. How does the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit work together in our salvation? And what role does each of them play? First of all, the Father is the planner. The Father is the source, sender, and the planner of salvation. In Mark 13, 32, it says, But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows 
not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So the Father is the planner. Next, the Son implemented the salvation. The Son, Jesus, is the means, the achiever of salvation. The Father sent the Son, and the Son came to save us. The Father planned it, but the Son accomplished it on the cross, and He rose from the dead on the third day. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Only through accepting His salvation, we can get eternal life, and the salvation is the gift to us by grace. Next, the Holy Spirit is our counselor and teacher. Holy Spirit, help us become more and more like Jesus, and He help us fulfill the commitments. There is about a six hundred thirteen commitments in the Bible. As long as you accept Jesus' salvation and you accept God to be your Lord, the six hundred thirteen commitments is for you. But also remember, Jesus had accomplished and completed everything for you, for your past, present, and future. But God also care about your heart. And your improvements, so that's why Holy Spirit is sent to us to help us become more and more like Jesus. He will help us to make progress step by step every day throughout the life. And Holy Spirit is in us, and we are the temple of Holy Spirit. All right, last but not least, let's do a quick review. First. God is three in person and one in essence. Second, when we talk about God, we talk about the Trinity: the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when we talk about Lord, we talk about the Trinity: the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And fourth, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit loves every one of us with unconditional and everlasting love. Fifth, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit works together in our salvation, and each of them plays a different role. Thank you so much for spending your precious time to review this important information with me. I really appreciate your hard exploring.